Hi everyone, Princess Rainy Cloud here and welcome back to my channel for another video. And if you're new to my channel, welcome to you as well. I cover subjects that are way out of the ordinary, uh, stemming from everything that are just things that are unexplainable to the downright weird and creepy. And many of them are centered around events that have happened to me or experiences that I have had. So I'm very happy to have you all with me today. Uh, today's video is going to be the first in a series about a historical building located in Laguna Beach, California, and I'm representing today, called Pine Castle, P-Y-N-E Castle. I was affiliated with this property for many, many years, in fact, most of my adult life. I had friends that lived there and eventually I became the on-site property manager and business manager there for the owner. So during my time both visiting and working there, some very, very strange events had occurred as well as I had heard many stories from people who had lived and worked there that were just downright hair raising. I want to get into that today and the first one that I'm going to start off with is entitled Disembodied Voices. So get a snack and a drink and sit back and we're going to get into it. Okay, so this building was built between 1928 and 1933, what one would consider a Normandy style architecture, originally built as a single house and had approximately 28 rooms and four guest houses along with garages that were located behind the main building. It had three stories and then it also had a basement where all the, say for example, the wiring, phone lines, cable lines, everything was located. It was originally named Broadview Villa back when it was first built, but it, it became known as Pine Castle because the man who built the castle was named Walter E. Pine. So Walter originally worked in the player piano business back in the 20s and he also owned property in Orange, California where he eventually struck oil. I mean, can you imagine how awesome that would be? So with his newfound fortune, he decided he was going to build his dream home. So he purchased a very large piece of property in North Laguna Beach. And for those of you who may not be uh, um, familiar with Southern California, Laguna Beach is a coastal community located approximately halfway between LA and San Diego. So it's right on the coast. He moved in, he was married to a woman from Colorado, I believe. And they were not married that long before, rumor has it, she left him and went back to Colorado. However, no one really knows exactly whatever really happened to her. The, the story kind of stops there. But he also had a caretaker who lived with him. There was also rumors that there was more going on between them. She was basically his mistress. and. When he passed away, which he did die on the property, he left the whole property to her. It was eventually purchased by two men, uh, Richard Masson and his partner, Roland Green. And I then worked for Mr. Masson. So by the time I was working there, Mr. Green had already passed away, but I worked, like I said, for Mr. Masson for many years. So that's just a, like a very, very brief, quick 
Cliff Notes history of this property and maybe I'll share some more details in my subsequent videos but I didn't want to make this one too long I just wanted to give you an idea of what it was all about so Mr. Masson and his partner Roland Green really you know, made it just a beautiful beautiful place they had a botanical garden on the side just just gorgeous not only was this building just amazing it had those turret rooms on the outside the round rooms with the the pointed top roof it had like i said eight acres of prime property in laguna beach that abutted to the canyons we had botanical gardens it was just it had a pool it was just beautiful we had aviaries and it was just just an amazing amazing place to not only live but also to work so i became a connected to Pine Castle through my boyfriend at the time when I first moved to California. His father was very good friends with a man who lived and worked at Pine Castle. His name was John. He had been there since he was like 19 years old. So by the time I met John, he had been living and working there for over 20 years. So it was like, it everybody that lived there were like a big family and he was very very close to the owner so he had a lot of uh, privileges that the average tenant or employee did not have at the time I had never met Mr. Masson because when I came to know him he was already much older and he was having a lot of health issues so he never he rarely left the property but at this particular time when I first met John he was still traveling back and forth to Hawaii so this particular month he spent the month of uh, November in Hawaii so John you know of course while the the cat was away the mice were playing and he and his friend my boyfriend's father planned this big dinner party up in the penthouse and they invited me and my boyfriend and of course my daughter came along as well she was very small at the time she was probably about five and so we it was just really exciting because this this property was just amazing and it was so historical and it was just so beautiful and so unique i mean it, it southern california isn't really good about preserving their historical sites and so when you come across a, a property like this it is very rare and just such a jewel so i was so excited to go and it was like the first time i was actually going to be inside the main building because i had visited john prior to that but i had never actually been inside the penthouse now this penthouse is amazing it spanned the whole top of the third floor of the building and like I said it had a hundred and eighty degree ocean view so you could see all of the lights of Laguna when you go out on the or even from the the windows I mean it was just amazing so we're up there it was an intimate dinner party uh, there was probably about I'd say six or eight of us all together my uh, boyfriend's younger brother and his girlfriend were there and then another couple joined us that lived there on the property as well because it was such a large unit that I didn't want my daughter roaming around and getting into things that she shouldn't and so I asked him which bathroom would you like us to use and you know he showed me which one we could use so before I let her in there I'm a little bit of a germaphobe I gotta say I decided that it was in my daughter's best interest for me to go in and you know kind of survey it to make sure that it was clean for her so I went into the bathroom and I noticed that, you know, it could use to, you know, it could use a cleaning and I just wanted to make sure everything was disinfected. So I went in and I grabbed some paper towels being the OCD person that I am and looked under the sink because basically you go into most people's bathroom it is almost a universal thing you will either find a bottle of disinfectant or Lysol or something located under the sink for cleaning purposes and lo and behold there was a bottle of bathroom cleaner and I was like oh thank goodness because I didn't want to ask my host because I didn't want to make him feel bad that I felt the need to clean the bathroom so I just wanted to do it very quickly privately without him realizing I was being a nut 
fucked up, okay? So you know, I'm spritzing the, the sink, I'm spritzing the toilet, and all of a sudden, I heard a voice clear as day. It was a man's voice, and it said, what are you doing? That's not your job. And I was just like, oh my God. And I just froze. I would, I, I just get, the hair stands up on the back of my neck and I get chills when I think about it. And I just stood there, but I had already sprayed this <laughs> disinfectant all over everything. I couldn't leave it. So I grabbed my paper towels and I wiped everything down really, really fast and, you know, like made sure everything was disinfected. And I, I threw the paper towels in the trash and put the, the cleaner back under the sink and I ran. And I ran back out to where everyone else was in the party and they're all, you know, just having a good time, having a glass of wine, you know, waiting for dinner to be served. And my boyfriend sees me and he says, honey, what's wrong? And I said, nothing, 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 nothing's wrong. He said, no, there's something wrong. I can see it on your face. What happened? And I said, nothing happened. He goes, no, no, no. He goes, L -l let's talk about this because you're gonna walk back in there with everyone and of course I was a little self-conscious about it because there were people that I I was meeting for the first time and and I really didn't know his father that well yet and I didn't want to come off as a total you know loopy nut job okay he pulls me aside and and I did feel comfortable about telling him about this because I trusted you know how he would view me but at the same time I didn't want to get too much into it because of the fact that you know, I was in an unfamiliar surrounding with people that I didn't really know very well. So we just kind of go over into the living room and he goes, tell me what happened. So I explained to him that, you know, I went in there, I noticed that the bathroom was a little, you know, not very clean and I didn't want Allison, you know, touching anything. And then I explained to him that I heard this voice and that it was clear. I mean, it it wasn't like a whisper. It wasn't ghostly. It sounded like there was someone standing right there over my shoulder. I heard it in my right ear. Clear as day. What are you doing? That's not your job. And he just looked at his eyes got really big. He goes, are you kidding me? And I said, no. And he's like, oh, wow. He goes, well, the castle has a very weird history. He goes, D you, you got to tell John. And it's like, I don't want to tell John. I don't want John to think I'm a nut job. He goes, trust me on this. John will understand. John's had plenty of these things happen to him as well. And so I'm explaining what had happened to me to John. And he's like, what? He goes, wow. He goes, you have been initiated into Pine Castle. And I, I was just, he said, you got to tell Becky. And I was like, I don't want to tell, <laughs> I don't want to tell Becky. I, that was the first time I was really meeting uh, Becky and her husband. I didn't want these people to think I was crazy. And, but it turns out that she too had had many, many things happen to her. And basically she said the same thing. She goes, wow, you, well, you've been initiated into Pine Castle. So it was just one of those, you know, really unexplainable situations and um you know i i finished the night without any further incidents but uh it was interesting because later on john and i were discussing that night and that event and he would always laugh about it because it is so odd and of course i had to you know i had to come clean with the fact that i was cleaning <laughs> cleaning his bathroom and he laughed he said you know i i'm not insulted because i i totally understand the fact that you didn't want you know your daughter touching things but he laughed because he said i really truly believe that that was roland uh the Richard Masson's partner uh, who had died in that apartment several years earlier and he said that Roland was very very particular and that they had a house a housekeeper who like he was very particular about the way she did things the way she you know carried out her duties and that anytime anyone would be there like say for example house guests or if john was going to like do something roland would say no 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 let i think her name was rosa i don't remember her name but we'll, we'll call her rosa don't no 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 that's not your job let her do it 
And he said that what when I communicated those words to him that I had heard, he said that he just had to laugh because all he could think was that sounds so much like something Roland would say. What are you doing? That's not your job. That's Rosa's job. <laughs> but Rosa wasn't there. <laughs> but, you know, it was so shocking because it, like I said, it wasn't a ghostly whisper. It, it was distinctive as if there was someone standing right there behind me, chastising me for stepping out of line, doing something in their home that I was not supposed to be doing. So that was my first, first time that I had ever experienced what I would call a disembodied voice. It is like, it's so real, it's so loud that it's un, I mean, it's, you can't ignore it. I mean, you can't ignore it and it's startling. So that was the first time that happened. The second time it happened was years later. I was now working at the property as the on-site property manager and business manager of, I, I handled basically everything for him. And then of course I acted as the liaison between him and his tenants. And one of my tenants, she ended up getting married while she was living there and then her husband joined her. But they also built a house up in Montana. So they would travel back and forth between Southern California and then they would go spend, you know, several weeks at a time at their home that they had built in Montana. So she was really into gardening. But while she was out of town, I would always, you know, every other day just check on her house plants. And then she had this really cute little kind of uh, cottagey type of garden that was right outside her front stoop. Her unit was located on the first floor and it was kind of at the far end. If you're standing there facing the building, it was on your left hand side at the bottom and it was just a little one bedroom with an additional little turret room. So she had let me know before she left that she was gonna be going and the date that she would be returning and the day that she was supposed to be coming back, she said she would be there approximately two or 2.30 in the afternoon. And I would arrive at the property just a few minutes before 9 a.m. And then I was usually there till about five. I was driving up the driveway. Now, her, like I said, her apartment was the lower unit to the far left of the first floor. And then right in the center were the main steps that went up to the lobby that would then go into a stairwell that would come up. I mean, it was just very grand. It would come up and then go to the second floor apartments that were, you had to access them from inside that front door. But hers had an outside access. And so many times I would be driving up that driveway and she, you would see her out there watering her garden. So I'm driving up the driveway and instead of going around that little circle that would then go to her unit, I was continuing on the drive that would then go back towards where my office and the additional cottages and garages and actual tenant parking was located. So I'm driving along and as I'm just getting to the point where I pass where the fountain was and then the little drive that would then go to her unit, I hear her say, hey Marcy! And it was her exact voice, loud as you know, loud as can be, just crystal clear. I heard her voice say, hey, Marcy. And I remember turning and looking, go, oh, she's home. And I thought, wow, they got back early. They must have arrived last night because like I said, it was about maybe five minutes before 9 a.m. I'm driving up, getting ready to go to work. So I thought, okay, good, they're back. Uh, so, But I looked and I didn't see her, so I thought maybe she had been outside working on the garden and walked around the side of the building and, you know, or she was just kind of out of view by the time I recognized that she had called to me and I looked over. So I go ahead and I pull on back, parked, went into the office, started my day, and it was business as usual. That afternoon, about 2 p.m., it was like between 2 and 2.30, she stopped by, let me know that she was there and 
drop off the rent checks and I said oh hey so how was your trip and she said oh it was great it's just oh it's so beautiful it's always nice to be there and I said wow you guys I wasn't expecting you till this afternoon I said so you must what did you come in last night or you guys back, got back pretty early she goes no 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 no. we just got here and I, I just remember my brain just kind of stopped for a minute and I said wait no 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 wait you know you were here this morning you, know, you got back this morning she said no we just now got here I wanted to come by and tell you we're back and I said and <laughs> I just froze and and she said what what's wrong and I said I was driving up the, and I really just remember I just felt flushed and because no matter how many times things like this happen it it's you're never expecting it and it always catches you off guard especially in this case where it is a disembodied voice that is so clear and sound I mean it was her and she had a very distinct voice it was not something where it sounded like her but it, you know or like it was just a woman's voice she had a very distinct voice and the way she said it was like she said it a hundred times to me before hey Marcy and I told her, I said, you're not going to believe this. But as I was driving up the driveway this morning, as I was passing the part where I would, you know, you would normally turn off left to go down the little circular drive to your unit, I heard you clear as day call out to me, hey, Marcy. And I turned to look and I didn't see you. And I figured that you were probably out watering things and possibly had gone around you know by the time I looked you'd got were on your way around the side of the building but you know I didn't see you but I assumed that you were home because I heard your voice clear as day and we just both looked at each other in amazement and of course it wasn't her what it was I don't know and the funny thing about it was prior to that when that happened to me those years all those years before in the penthouse during that dinner party uh, John was so certain that it was rolling green that possibly his spirit was still there in the penthouse or that you know because he had had other things that had happened to him uh, over the years since Mr. Green had died so he assumed that it was just rolling on the property but whatever it was was imitating people who were alive they were it was imitating their voice so to this day, I'm still baffled by that. Other things had happened since then, which I will get into in upcoming videos. In fact, um, one of them was basically, I can only describe it. In fact, one of my tenants at the time who was very in tune with a lot of these things, <laughs> she said, oh, you've seen a doppelganger. And I was like, what's a doppelganger? And she explained it to me. And then in another, another uh, video I want to talk about is a... Um, I saw an apparition that looked like the Terminator and I have seen some things online that also talk about people seeing similar things so I want to discuss that as well so that will be coming up in upcoming videos about this property but there was just so many strange events that had happened and that were reported to me over the years that there is just no explanation for so I wanted to share that with y'all. I am very, very interested to know if you have ever had this happen to you. Have you had a, a instance where you heard a voice clear as day, whether someone that you believe, you know, that was deceased or even someone that you was still with us, but they were not there and you heard their voice clear as day. I'm very curious to know your experiences. So definitely leave me a comment in the comment section below. And if you haven't yet, definitely subscribe and mark all your notifications so that when these new videos come up, you'll be notified immediately. And again, I want to thank you all for watching. I am so appreciative of all my subscribers as well as all my viewers. And I, it brings me great joy to entertain you and to share these experiences with you. So I want to just say thank you again. Mm, love all y'all. And thank you again for watching. I will see you in my next video. So bye.